At the heart of today's discourse, we encounter a tale of profound faith and courage that transpired during the concluding hours of a greatly admired spiritual figure. Pope John Paul II, this chosen servant of the divine, succeeding the Apostle Peter as the head of the church, imprinted an enduring impact on not only the church's chronicles, but also the annals of our global society. The remarkable example he set during the challenging twilight of his life remains an invaluable lesson for each one of us to reflect upon and draw inspiration from, particularly during the harshest periods of our existence. In anticipation of his imminent journey to eternity, John Paul II made a brave choice in consensus with his medical consultants. Instead of relocating to a hospital, he elected to remain within the comforting confines of his residence in Rome. His preference to experience pain and ultimately pass away within his cherished home, proximate to the tomb of Apostle Peter, was a testament to his unyielding trust in the divine will of God, which he accepted without an iota of doubt. On the final day of his terrestrial existence, a Saturday, the Pope said his goodbyes to his confidence in the Roman Curia. Despite the debilitating symptoms of a high fever and pronounced weakness, he remained committed to his spiritual practice, praying relentlessly by his bedside. The poignant utterance that lingers in our collective consciousness, let me go to the Father's house, were his words. These were expressions of hope and faith in the promise of eternal life made to humanity by God through his Son, Jesus Christ. As the sun began its descent at approximately five o'clock, the first vespers of the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday, was recited. The reading spoke about the empty tomb and the resurrection of Christ. As these words filled the atmosphere, the Pope's gaze lovingly embraced those surrounding him. Simultaneously, in the streets of Rome, Multitudes of faithful followers assemble to offer prayers and evoke the name of John Paul II. Their resonating chants were like a harmonious choir expressing their affection and gratitude towards the Holy Father. The walls of the Pope's room held an image depicting Christ's suffering, the ex homo, and his eyes, gradually dimming, rested on this representation as if immersed in contemplating the mystery of the Passion. Alongside was another image of Our Lady of Sestakoa, the Queen of Poland, a comforting maternal figure who had accompanied him throughout his life's journey. A photograph of his parents on a nearby table symbolized his familial roots, his history, the wellspring from which he drew strength and inspiration. As nightfall draped the sky in a blanket of stars, around eight o'clock, Monsignor Stanislaw Zuis led the Holy Mass in honor of Divine Mercy Sunday at the bedside of the dying Pope. The company included Cardinal Marian Jaworski, Monsignor Mieczysław Mokrzycki, and Father Tadeusz Dixon. This sacred gathering served as a moment of divine grace and a reaffirmation of trust in God's mercy. During this poignant moment, the Gospel of John held an intensified significance, especially the verse where Jesus proclaims, Peace be with you. This provided solace not only to the heart of the fading Pope, but also to all those present. The sacrament of anointing the sick was performed, offering spiritual healing and comfort during these final stages of life. As his strength dwindled, John Paul II received the Holy Viaticum, the Eucharistic communion given to someone near or in danger of death with profound gratitude. His weakening grip clung onto a blessed lit candle, a symbol of light and hope. At 2137, during a profoundly silent and prayer-filled moment, John Paul II departed from this realm, transitioning to eternal glory with God. Those present started singing the Te Deum a hymn of praise and thanksgiving to God, acknowledging the Holy Father's remarkable life and his influential pontificate. John Paul II bequeathed us an invaluable doctrine of faith, hope, and love. 
His fearlessness when confronting death enlightens us that during our darkest trials, we should remain firm in our trust in God. His life was like a beacon in the night, showcasing how to face suffering and death with tranquility and faith in God's divine plan. He demonstrated that death isn't a cessation, but rather a commencement of an eternal existence in unity with God. His choice to remain home, concluding his earthly journey near the Apostle Peter's tomb, was a potent symbol of his love for the church and his selfless dedication to God's service. He has left behind a legacy of love, compassion, and humility that continues to inspire millions around the world. His unshakable faith, extraordinary ability to forgive, profound spirituality, and intimate relationship with God touched many lives, prompting them to seek reconciliation and peace. Now, as we commemorate John Paul II, it's incumbent upon us to take his teachings forward incorporating them into our lives. We should strive to disseminate the joy of God's love to everyone we encounter, living with hope, trust, and charity. We should remember that death doesn't have the last word. Instead, it serves as a doorway to eternal life with God. May His Spirit continue to guide us, and may His testimony fortify our faith. Let's learn from Him to treasure each day as a precious gift. John Paul II, we ask for your intercession. Teach us to live with passion and dedication for the kingdom of God. May God's blessings be upon us all.